How would you like some peanut butter with that jelly sandwich? Mother. Hey, oh, it's the Chris Card Show. Hey, oh. It's- this show is brought to you by. Hello and welcome to another episode. How are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good. That's good. We have Tim Gorecki here. Hello, boys. Back for another one. With uh, and I actually listened to the one I missed. Oh, did you? I did. Oh, that's good. Wow. So you're you're in tune with everything now. I am. And you're and you're uh, almost ballless. Yes. Yes. I yeah. uh, got snipped. Got neutered. snipped. Got stitches in my balls. Now was that scary going in? No, like having we, another kid is scarier. That's that's, that's very true. Wow. <laughs> that's actually the best I've ever <laughs> best uh, I've ever heard about that. When they did it, you said it was a twenty minute thing, right? And yeah. they numbed your nutsack. Yep. So they had to cup it. You said they, they, he squeezed it to find the tubes. Jesus. I don't know the anatomy term for it, but yeah, that wasn't fun. But and how hard was it? And was it? We- it was a male that did it, right? Yep. Okay. How hard did he squeeze your? Here, nuts? can you show me on my hand? <laughs> <laughs> I, he he squ- gave it a good squeeze. <laughs> Tim said, "Fuck your hand." He, they, yeah, you said that you had the stomach pain, like someone got yeah, like you got getting hit in or someone squeezing your nuts or wow, that's waxing insane. the nuts. Well, so the doctor had a good grip. Yep. Oh yeah, that's, that's good. Was he like a manly man or was he just like you know? A doctor man. He was just a doctor man. <laughs> but he uh, brought his phone in, blasted music. Well, well that's, that's good. good. Yeah. <laughs> what was he playing? Uh, weird uh, pop crap. No. Oh. Oh, so he was a younger guy? No, he was an older guy, but... Uh, but he was just... Yep. He thought that that's what you wanted to listen to. Yeah, it wasn't Foo Fighters or anything. Cool, yeah. But. No. Uh, speaking of Foo Fighters, I'm reading uh, Dave Grohl's book. Have you ever, have you read it? No, I have not. It's actually really good. When I'm done with it, you could uh, uh, borrow it if you want. Yeah, that would be interesting. But uh, yeah, it's 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 really good. Have you guys watched the the Foo Fighters horror movie? I no. Haven't. My, no. Uh, and my wife just told me about it the other day. Oh, this is the first you heard of it? <laughs> yeah, I've oh. heard of it, but uh, yeah, we never. Uh, I never seen it. We, we had a plan to go see it in, in the theater. theaters. Yeah, and it just it never came to fruition. So did she say it was good? We, we didn't. We didn't watch it. She just. Oh, like, I thought she saw it. it. No, it was, it just uh, somehow we got on the conversation on Dave Grohl and she's like did you know they had did a horror movie he's yeah. getting into a whole acting career now because he just did that commercial too yeah for Crown Royal yeah oh that's right yeah Canadian eh? which well, was an interesting but I think commercial. he drinks that though like backstage and shit yeah I think you're right because when remember when uh, we went to see Foo Fighters at Wrigley um, and they had the camera backstage not really. And with him and Taylor Hawkins were like drinking, and they like they had the camera backstage, and they said, "You want us to come out, motherfuckers?" They had Crown Royal. That's okay. what they were drinking. So maybe that's that's his drink. Like I would make a commercial for Jim Beam. Oh, I know you would in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, now, yeah, especially, but like if I had lots of money, I would still make it. You know? Yeah, that was my uh, especially if it comes with free Jim Beam. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean that shit's nineteen a bottle. <laughs> Inflation, right? Okay. Um, so we don't have Matt here right now. No, we have Tim. I think he's walking in the door. Oh, is he? Maybe. Thought I heard the car pull up. Could be wrong. Could be wrong, yeah. Uh, Matt's running really late. He had to eat dinner. (laughs) And poop. And poop. So, uh, Chris. Yeah. What'd you have for dinner? I didn't eat anything. I had pistachios, actually. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? Because I was dedicated. I didn't want to be running late for you guys. So I said... I, I can't eat dinner because I just put Miles down. Actually, I was putting Miles down. Tim texted me, and I said, I'm putting Miles down. I'll be right out, and I couldn't eat. So, so here you are. Starving. Starving. Marvin. Put your kid to bed. Yeah. Showed up before yeah. the janitor. I, I he's, The janitor. He's getting a lot of, yeah, he's getting a lot of checks in the wrong boxes here. Yeah. that's I'm, I'm kind of thinking we're going to have to have a performance discussion. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like a little write-up or something. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That'll be great. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, Le Coma Sta. Yeah. 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 And um, Isto uh, Bene. Isto Bene. Uh huh. Yep. Uh, um, Baklava. Are they Capisce the Italiano? Mm, no. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, you Capisto Umpo Italiano. Uh, mm, I was no. saying I said I, I speak a little in uh, Italian. A little. I just wanted to do that. You're doing really good, though, because yeah. even even the way you're pronouncing the words are coming out really well. Are they? It, with, if it was, I can't even pronounce English correctly. <laughs> so the way you're doing Italian is, is, is turning out really well. It sounds there convincing. Is, there is this app uh, that someone told me to download, and it's $15 a month, whatever. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. There, there was a free app, but the free app was just teaching me how to say, I shit you not. Um, keep your snake away from my cake. <laughs> I'm not even. I wish that was a fucking joke, but I was like, okay, I'm fucking done with this. Act. Okay, how do you say that? In I don't even remember. I, as soon as I seen it, I just turned it off. I'm like, I, I'm not doing this app. So then I download this other app and I, I listen to it on the way to work or wherever, and when I'm in the car, um, and then uh, yeah, I'll learn a couple things. You know, that sounds like what. What is what is an Italian phrase that I can use? I mean, I don't I don't know much. I, I only know. Do you understand uh, Italian English? Are you American? I understand American English. Uh, buongiorno. That's good morning. How do you uh, say goodbye? Arrivederci. 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 How do you say I want a beer? I don't know that yet. Bathroom. Uh, it would be io. Uh, io. That's all I know is I. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. That's a start. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'll, you, but I'll be learning more. There's a lot more. If you do go, you're just going to be drinking wine anyways. Right. And we're, and, we're, and I'm supposed to go. Well, just, they, have, you know. they have fine beers there, don't they? Isn't there? Yeah, Peroni. Peroni's good, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, that's actually my drink of choice in the summer. But who am I? I'm just some guy. Yeah. Uh, Mike. Bring this song in. You were very uh, adamant about this. So adamant you said, fuck Tim song. Yeah, sorry about that, Tim. No problem. I'm just sorry about that. I was, <laughs> I was excited to bring this song in uh, a couple weeks ago, and then it didn't happen. And then I went on vacation, and then it, it's been weeks in the coming, and I've been very excited to get this out. Um, so the band, it's actually just a dude. His name is Ren, and the song is called Hi, Ren. Okay. Oh, is that your introduction? <laughs> yeah, what What else do we need? Oh, I don't know. On the Chris Gort show? Here. Okay, here. Oh, we're going to try that. Okay, so... I'm the, not editing this. <laughs> that, that's fine. We're just going to... Everybody, we're going to sit down, close your eyes. Close them. We're going to do a pretend take here. And just... Okay, we edit it. We're cutting it. And then here, take... This is Ren with Hi, Ren. On the Chris Gort show. The whole reason why we redid that. I know you need me You're the sheep I'm the shepherd Not your place to lead me Not your place to be Biting off the hand That feeds me Hi Bren I've been taking some time To be distant I've been taking some time To be still I've been taking some time To be by myself Since my therapist Told me I'm ill And I've been making Some progress lately And I've learned Some new coping skills So I haven't really Needed you much man I think we need to Just step back and chill Bren You sound more insane Than I do You think that those doctors Are really there to guide you Been through this a million times Your civilian mind Perfect, I'll always be in lie to Okay, take another pill, boy Drown yourself in the sound of white noise Follow this ten-step program, rejoice All your problems will be gone Fucking dumb, boy Nah, mate, this time is different, man Trust me, I feel like things might be falling in place And my music's been kind of doing bits too Like I actually might do something great And when I'm gone, maybe I'll be remembered For doing something special with myself 
That's why you don't think that we should talk, man. Cause when you're with me, it never seems to help. You think that you can amputate me? I am you, you are me, you are I, I am we, we are one. Split in two, that makes one, so you see. You gotta kill you if you wanna kill me. I'm not left over dinner, I'm not scraps on the side. Oh, your music is thriving, delusional guy. Where's your top ten hit? Where's your interview with Oprah? Where are your Grammys, Ren? Nowhere. Yeah, but my music's not commercial like that. I never chase numbers, statistics or stats. I never write hooks for the radio, they never even play me, so why would I concern myself with that? But my music is really connecting, and the people who find it respect it. And for me, that's enough, cause this life's been tough, so it gives me a purpose I can rest in. Man, you sound so pretentious. Ran, your music is so self-centered. No one wants to hear another song about how much you hate yourself. Trust me. You should be so lucky Having me inside you to guide you Remind you to manage expectations Provide you perspective That thing you neglected I get it You wanna be a big deal Next Jimi Hendrix? Forget it Man, it's not like that Man, it's just like that I'm inside you, you twat No, it's not, man You're wrong When I write, I belong Let me break the fourth wall By acknowledging this song Ren sits down Has a stroke of genius He wants to write a song That was not done previous A battle with his subconscious Eminem did it Played on guitar Plan B did it Man, you're not original You criminal rip off artist The pinnacle of your success Is stealing other people's material Ren, mate, we've heard it all before Oh, she sells seashells On the seashore Fuck you I don't need you I don't need to hear this Cause I'm fine by myself I'm a genius and I will be great And I will make waves And I'll shake up the whole world beneath us That's right, speak your truth Your fucking god complex leaks out of you It's refreshing to ask for you Say it instead of downplay it uh, Music is all about the creative process And if people can find something to relate to within that Then that's just a bonus Fuck you, I'ma fucking kill you, Ren Well, fucking kill me then Let's fucking have you, Ren I'ma do it, watch me prove it Who are you to doubt my music? Cause I call the shots, I choose if you die Yeah, I call the shots and so I choose who survives I'll tie you up in knots when I lock you inside Newsflash, I was created at the dawn of creation. I am temptation. I am the snake in Eden. I am the reason for treason, beheading all kings. I am sin, with no rhyme or reason. Son of the morning, Lucifer, Antichrist, father of lies. Mistopheles, truth in the blender, deceitful pretender, the banished avenger, the righteous surrender. When standing in front of my solar eclipse, my name is stitched to your lips. So you see, I won't bow to the will of a mortal, feeble and normal. You wanna kill me? I'm eternal and mortal. I live in every decision that catalyzes chaos that causes division. I live inside death, the beginning of end. I am you, you are me, I am you, friend. Hi, Ren. I've been taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by myself and I've spent half my life ill But just as sure as the tide starts turning Just as sure as the night has dawn Just as sure as the rain falls soon runs dry when you stand in an eye of a storm I was made to be tested and twisted I was made to be broken and beat I was made by his hand, it's all part of his plan that I stand on my own two feet And you know me, my will is eternal And you know me, you've met me before Face to face with a beast, I will rise from the east and I'll settle on the ocean floor. And I go by many names also. Some people know me as hope. Some people know me as the voice that you hear when you loosen the noose on the rope. And you know how I know that I'll prosper? Cause I stand here beside you today. I have stood in the flames that cremated my brain and I didn't once flinch or shake. So cower at the man I've become when I sing from the top of my lungs. That I won't retire, I'll stand in your fire Inspire that me to be strong And when I am gone I will rise In the music that I left behind Ferocious, persistent, immortal like you We're a coimented different side
listening to music on the radio? When you can listen to music like this... Bands and more can be found on the Chris Court Show with all new episodes. Well, all right, and we're back. So, what'd you guys think? Well, here once again, that was Ren with High Ren. And what'd yeah. you guys think of it? Well, uh, honestly, I think it was probably. One of the top songs played on here. I really, really like that. It reminded me of um, The Streets a little, too. I, I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. It was the way he put his lyrics together, just everything about it was fucking cool as shit. Who brought that one? Oh, Matt's here, by the way. Yeah, I just showed up in the middle of the song. Well, who brought that song? Hi, Matt. Uh, Mike. That was Mike's choice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. You're so, reaching out a little bit. Let's so stop. I have a couple of notes that I wrote. Uh, so first off, just to begin with, uh, Leia, um, the in the beginning reminded me of that guy. Oh, Leia. yeah. <laughs> la, 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 la. yeah. And that's, what I, that's where I thought the song was kind of going cause with, with the guitar and everything in the beginning. Um, and then it reminded me a lot of uh, Scroobius Pip. He's, uh, no, he's like an underground um, um, rapper. Uh, a song called You Will See Me. Is almost exactly yes. like that. Wait, was that the video where he was in the room like trashing it and then reverse? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I remember you showing me that, and that's kind of kind of what caught my attention on. Okay, this yeah, particular. that's what reminded me a lot of it, and it, it, I, that's what I. Um, he sounded like Eminem in a couple of verses. I think he might have been doing it doing it on purpose because I think he even said in there like a, you know, like um, Eminem did this already. Yeah. Um, so I think he was kind of making fun of himself. And then uh, another rapper, Chesky, sounded like at the end when he had the guitar. But uh, I actually was so excited about this, I made notes. Like, that was really fucking yeah, cool. I haven't seen you make notes on a musician before, so that was kind and of And not to say that we didn't play any good music before. We played a lot of fucking really good music, but I was really... Uh, interested in this one. I mean, I, I honestly, I was skeptical when he started doing the ooze. Yeah, right. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, no, once he got into the rapping, it, it, was, it yeah, was good. It was just fucking cool. And he, and he just told the story. Um, and that's what I like it. Um, uh, what's his name? It's a lot like this, too. Uh, white dude, he's on a TV show. Oh, fuck. Forget his name. But either way, it was really good. And what I like about this guy is that you hear you hear the acoustic guitar. Um, I there was a couple other songs I was kind of going between and and showing, but I thought this one kind of shows a broad range of what he does. Lyrically, this guy is amazing. The, the I way just he tell frames from that a song, picture, yeah. yeah it he's he, and every song I've heard from him is just been absolutely wonderful as far as lyrics is concerned but it's not all it's not all straight rapping like this and it's not it's he's he's an amazing guitar player he does really really good he's got some um he he mixes up several different styles at once yeah. and i think that's kind of where he shines uh he was actually he was signed to sony music in 2009 but he wound up losing the contract because he just about as soon as he got signed, he got sick. So he was just bedridden. Oh, and so wait, is he dead or? No, he's still alive. Oh, that's good. Yeah, this is a recent, <laughs> this is, a, he just posted this, okay. um, I want to say either late December or early January. Where is he from? He's from Wales. Okay. Wales, UK. Okay. Um, so a lot of what he's writing about now is kind of his struggles in that time frame from 2009 to now because 
I, he kept getting misdiagnosed with things. They thought he had depression. They thought he had chronic fatigue. And it turns out he's got Lyme disease. Not but sure. he's had Lyme disease for so long that it's 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 affected his brain it's affected like every part of his body so now he goes and he he's got to take he shows that he's got to take handfuls of pills every really? day and he's just swallowing so all these pills during and, all this and now it's like and now it's like i don't even care about who's listening anymore now i'm just kind of interested in myself <laughs> so it's like so he wrote this song while he had lyme disease and he, he still was has lyme disease right now he's in canada and he's going through treatments every day he's got to go in get ivs um uh if you look on his youtube page just check it out ren r e n and you'll find him or just look up hi ren you'll you'll see some of his other uh, videos and his videos are very captivating. A lot of one shot videos, yeah. uh, which seem very intimate. Uh, he was he was um, his, his videos. Uh, the one where it talks about his disease and stuff like that. He just opens up a cabinet and it's it's literally like a hutch full of um, medicines. Wow! It's it's disgusting how much medicine this guy yeah. has to take. That's I, I I'm actually very interested. It, it's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Definitely um, check. So them out. Uh, any albums that he has albums that are is he on Spotify or is he on all that shit? Here's the fun part about this guy: no albums. Oh really? Not so one just... album. No website. Okay. Uh, all his all his stuff is hits streaming off YouTube. He's got a couple things on Spotify, Amazon Music, but it's all singles. Wow. Not one album. Okay. So I don't know if we're going to get an album or when we're going to get an album. He seems like he's very dedicated. He's got another song he wants to release soon. No EPs? But no EPs either. Mm. But uh, he's planning on releasing it. Yeah, I guess right now he's going through some more invasive treatment up in Canada. So once he gets through that, he said late March he's planning on releasing a new single. Wow. Well, hey, Rennie, uh, we need you to make an album. You know, <laughs> I, I need my life fulfilled. That was That was very good. Very good. Um, so this is Matt. Yep, Welcome, Matt. Now. Mike, you smell like you've been working on something. You smell like fresh cut wood. Fresh cut wood? Yeah. I um, I had Hakuna Matata for dinner, and it was the mixed grill, so it was chicken and lamb over rice. I that's it. I've been burping a lot. You smell like you've been, like, sawing two-by-fours. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's just his manly how, how is Kuna, uh, Kuna Matata? That place is very sketchy looking. No, I like it. They they have new owners now. It's not but salty, same bro. Salty, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's salty, bro, but in all the good ways. Hakuna Matata? I never even heard of that place. Oh, it's, um, it's 95th like Street, old uh, Taco Bell, I think. No, Taco oh, Bell's really? still there, there, right okay. next door. There, okay. Right next door. Or, or that checkers? Was the, those or, old rallies or checkers. Yeah, yeah, rallies, yeah. yeah. And then it was like fatso's or something. Oh, yeah, yeah fatso's, I know yeah. what you're talking yeah, about. sign on her, yeah. Yeah, because we were just looking at that. I, or someone, something, I got a flaccid mic over here. <laughs> <laughs> someone, we were just looking at this place and we were talking about it. I want to say it was with you. You and me, we were just talking about it. You and me, we were just talking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um... So into some music news, Godsmack's drummer explains the band's decision to stop recording new albums. What? Even though they have a new album coming out uh, this summer. Uh, he said, yeah, he said, if, it's kind of like sports, man. We're not going to do some kind of cash grab. And that's kind of interesting, too, that, that he says that because, and this is what he says, just to kind of um, square off the story. 25 years of putting records out, and we've never had a flop. And I'm 55. Uh, we were playing in the UK, and the band, uh, the Raven Age, opened. It's uh, Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. His son plays guitar for this band. Maybe third, fourth show, whatever. I'm like, hey, dude, how old are you, by the way? He was like, I'm 23. And I was like, my daughter's 23. And I was like, wow. Okay, that had nothing to do with anything. But they're, um, it looks like they're trying to do the reverse Beatles. Instead of stop touring and just make albums, they're doing the opposite. They're going to tour and stop making albums. So they're just going to keep playing the old shit for a while. That's yeah, that's what it seems like. So you got nothing left to write? Is that what he's saying? <laughs> I think he he just says it's a kind of a ca cash grab. How is it not a cash grab if they're still going to keep touring? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think like the whole point of being a musician is to write 
and music, play music. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, you're just doing half of it. So this seems like a cash grab, Mr. Godsmack Drummer. This is a cash grab, if you think about it. Yeah, I found that interesting, though. The Why, why the fuck would you do that? Um, Rolling Stones is coming out with a new album featuring... There Paul- you go. There you go. Prime <laughs> example. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, I didn't even set that up on purpose. It, that just kind of came. Yeah, Rolling Stones, new album. When did they come out? In the early 60s? 60s? Yeah, early 60s. Here we go. Rolling Stones is recording new music, a new album with Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. Okay, double there you go. <laughs> Which is kind yeah, of interesting. None of them need cash. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, yeah, why isn't this a cash grab? Um, I mean, it kind of is. Haven't you seen the picture or the prices of those tickets for those shows? Yeah, I know they're expensive. <laughs> but this is a new album. But We're all going to stream it for free anyway. I, I, I think the Stones cost me less than Paul McCartney did. Probably. I mean, you're seeing a Beatle, Tim. Yeah. I know you like the Stones more, though. You were a stone. What, what, was it less than Taylor Swift? Oh, oh Taylor uh, way, Swift. way less. Yeah, way less. <laughs> like three point five million. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so this would be the first uh, Rolling Stones album, actually the first collaboration recording that I can think of um, that ha- features the Rolling Stones and a Beatle. Or the whole, Beatles. the whole Rolling Stones, because I know there was uh, John Lennon had the Dirty Mac band that had Keith Richards well, it's, in it's it. It's all of the living Rolling Stones and Beatles. Yeah, and the, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, that is what it is. To be honest with you, <laughs> <laughs> John Lennon's not there. Or George Harrison. Well, I'm pretty sure they'd have a hard time showing up. <laughs> yeah. Well, not a hard time these days. Well, you know, there's a stairway to heaven. Yeah, but John's sleeping like a dog. Ah, it's been a hard day's night. Wes Gantlin. <laughs> he is arrested again for trespassing. Again. Yeah, you is know Wes Gantlin. Is that Puddle of Mud? Where was he Puddle trespassing this time? Yeah. So he be- <laughs> should, should we play a game? Should we take a guess? Tim, are your balls okay? You keep on going. Uh, well, a little annoying. <laughs> Are, are, can you see the stitches? Yes. You can, can we see, see them? Or no? uh, if you want to see my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not, not on camera, Mike. Mike. Mike's taking photos for Facebook. Mike, <laughs> damn. Mike, he didn't even say it and you had the camera out. Jesus. Well, yeah, we you keep hounded on me for pictures. So oh, no, no, I like it. But like he was about Mike, to show Mike his balls. Mike saw an opportunity. <laughs> He's like, someone's showing their balls all right. <laughs> I mean, I, we all seen your balls, so it's well, only fair. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There, it's a lot smaller now. <laughs> Not my balls, the penis, maybe. Um, but, Is that because it's cold out? Yeah. <laughs> How would you say that in Italian? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. You missed my Italian, Matt. Un poquito? <laughs> Isn't that Spanish? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so what what he did is um, he got arrested for Mr. Meter trespassing again, um, and he uh, showed up an old home. He lost a foreclosure in the Hollywood Hills neighborhood of Los Angeles, and then he was arrested and released on a thousand dollar bail. He went to his old house. Yeah, he went to his old house. Was so. was he sober or was, was he drunk and just like forgot that he moved? Um, it doesn't say anything about him being. Why aren't my keys working? <laughs> Uh, in the past, the Puddle of Mud singer has been arrested for trying to bring a BB gun on a board, on board a flight in uh, LAX in 2017, and for jumping on a baggage carousel in Denver and taking a joyride. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something you would do. You yeah, know, they're, well. they're playing a show not not too far from us uh, in the nearby future, and tickets are like 35 bucks. It's at like a bar. Like a bigger bar, only like a Bourbon Street type bar. Yeah. And I, I remember looking at that and going, wow, you know, that's that's kind of a small place for them to play. And then somebody on the comments was actually saying, these bands fucking ripping people off, you know, charging too much money. And it's like, it's really? $35 <laughs> for a ticket. <laughs> I think we paid more for that than that for uh, Local H before. Yeah, I think we have. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> and they're smaller. <laughs> Yeah. Uh oh. Hey guys, what new albums are coming out these days? New releases done. These days. These days. New albums. New albums. New albums. New albums. New albums. All 
right? New releases coming out. Yeah, look at that. On um, February 24th, this Friday. Go and check it out. First up to date is Adam Lambert. He is the guy that is now singing for Queen, I believe. Right? That is correct. Yeah, okay. High drama. Algiers, Shook. We got Begonia with Powder Blue. You want to give a, a, a good old college try there? Big Blue? Brave. Big Brave. Nature? Nature Mor- Morte. Morte. It's, it's Italian. No, it's not. I don't know. <laughs> David Brewis, The Soft Struggles. And that's a debut LP for Fields Music. David Brewis under his name. I don't know what that means. Gina Birch, I Play My Bass Loud. My bass. We got Gorillas with Cracker Island. Oh! Gracie Abrams with Good Riddance. Logic. Oh, that's another uh, kind of underground rapper. College Park. Philip Selway, Strange Dance. And we have Shame with Food for Worms. And U.S. Girls with Bless This Mess. And that is all for the new releases February 24th. You, Go and check them out. Go and pick them up at your local record store. Do whatever you want and just support them. You know, you could really just stream them, but, you know, that's... So, yeah, so uh, yeah, all yeah, these that's what we're gonna do. bands that are artists that no, you guys never, none of one's ever heard of, have you actually listened to any of these? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we used to play, we used to just say the, uh, uh, the bands that we knew. But then, you know, we kind of thought there was like, none. <laughs> right. We kind of thought like, well, you know, we're all about showcasing new uh, music that we never heard of. So, but, you know, it's it is cool when some of the bands that we play here, they wind up on that list. Like when St. Paul and the Broken Bones yeah. wound up on there and uh, the Dead South were on there. Yeah. There's a lot of bands that we've played that actually uh, didn't get really popular, but they got like, you know, kind of up there. And there was Alabama before- Shakes. Yeah, that was before. Yeah, before they got into, uh, you know, uh, very popular. <laughs> Is that when they were depopular? <laughs> oh, a little Joe's mom reference, eh? <laughs> um, Kurt Cobain's birthday was on February twentieth, and he turned fifty-six. Mike, what are you going to do with this information? So his bones turned 56. His bones turned 56. Well, good. What do you do sure with this his information? His bones don't exist anymore. Do you think so? It's been how long? How long does it take for bone to decompose? Well, his skull won't be there. Ah? Ah? <laughs> that actually took me a minute. Ah? <laughs> waka waka. Waka waka. <laughs> This is Daka. And uh, oh. do, do you do you like do any like kind of thing for his birthday or anything? Wow. He's or a, have you ever? That's weird. He's almost been dead for thirty years. No. Yes. That's crazy. That's why I said his bones probably aren't there anymore. Yeah, I I thought bones would last longer it than that. It depends on how he was. <laughs> you want me to kiss him or what? <laughs> yeah, we got to get in on this. Do do the Beatles style. <laughs> I was saying, if he was buried in a regular like wooden casket, it's probably all gone. I thought caskets were steel. If they're wooden caskets, no. They're wooden caskets. <laughs> Would he have had a wooden casket? Possibly. Who knows? Who gets buried in a wooden casket these days? Lots of people. Well, that was in 94. Well, uh, he's he's not true. saying to say like a uh, Home Depot wooden casket. He's talking, yeah, the, talking the fancy. plywood from Home Depot. I'm talking <laughs> about an actual wooden casket, like an oak casket. <laughs> You're not talking about that pine box? <laughs> no. Not the, not the casket you're building for yourself, no. <laughs> I told you I smelled wood. <laughs> Are you thinking about the old style fucking caskets? <laughs> Who gets building these? Uh, so here's an interesting fact about um, Kurt Cobain. Mark Lanigan has a new book out, and, it's, uh, and he says that the late singer, uh, he said that he co-wrote um, something in the way with Kirk Cobain. Oh yeah, say it now that he's dead. But it, it, <laughs> but he never got credit for it. So what do you say, Mister Kirk Cobain? Why didn't he get credit? Cool. <laughs> 
It's been 30 years. Why are you bringing it up now? Well, he's dead. They're both dead. <laughs> They're both dead. <laughs> but uh, he has a book. <laughs> Let's give the dead guy some money. <laughs> he has a book, So and it, and it says that. So it's an estate cash grab. So, so oh. he, he wrote this book after he died? I... Mm, <laughs> you know what? Maybe, maybe he was working on his memoirs before he died. Because I know he was kind of a uh, new biography. Uh, no, it's not an autobiography. So it's just a biography about him, and it reveals that he uh, supposedly contributed lyrics to something in the way. Well, I mean, they were all together. I mean, it's completely possible. Yeah, isn't it crazy? You know, uh, me and a buddy were talking about this. There's not uh, really any grunge people left. Dave Grohl. Yeah, but I'm talking about like the people that were Pearl there. Jam, Eddie Vedder. That was Eddie Vedder is the only one. That's what we were saying. Dave Grohl, I guess you could take. Dave Grohl still dresses grungy and stuff. He pretty much is grunge. Yeah, but I mean, like, who else? Who else I is mean, there? Dave Navarro, Allison Chains. Yeah. Yeah, Lane Staley's mm-hmm. still around. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, not Lane Staley. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Jerry Control? Yeah, thank you. Jerry Control's still around, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lane Staley is around. But look at all those people that died. Like, you had uh, Scott's, uh, Scott Stamp. <laughs> Jesus. Scott Weiland. And you take um, me higher. <laughs> right. Chris Cornell. Um... Scott Wiley, Scott Wiley, is that what you were looking for? Yeah, Scott yeah. Wyland. I said him. Uh, Chris Cornell, Lane Staley. Um, the dude from uh, fucking... Um, oh, Kirk Cobain died. All I can <laughs> say. Yeah, but that's irrelevant. I was waiting for that one to come up. <laughs> that's irrelevant. Um, is that my life is pretty plain? F- Faith No More? No. Or, uh, oh, Blind Melon. Blind Shannon Hoon. Hoon. Blind yeah. Melon. Is that his name? Sh- yeah, Shannon Hoon. Shannon Hoon. How did you know that? Because. Oh, yeah, no, I just, I I didn't even think you would know the name He's of that. He's a secret super fan. Are you? Yeah, there you go. No. Name another song, by the way. Oh, the Spin Doctors, <laughs> they're still around. Spin Doctors, yeah, but they weren't grungy. Yeah, but they're not? No. I thought you were just talking about grunge era. Oh, I guess we could be talking about but I'm talking about grungy. You know. Aren't the Meat Puppets still doing shit? Yeah. But they weren't very popular. We're, we're kind of burying your point here. <laughs> no, because the Meat, the meat Puppets, every and you ask the, anyone. The, yeah, the only songs you know from the Meat Puppets are the ones that Kirk Cobain covered. Right. <laughs> That's not the point. They're still around. They did. <laughs> but he covered a lot of their songs, yeah. so we know a lot of their songs. <laughs> are they the ones who did Backwater? Backwater. Meat Puppets? Is that who I'm thinking of? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. That's it. Yeah. Um, so here's a crazy fact, a little uh, fun fact for you. Uh, it's a golden age for non-alcoholic beers, wines, and spirits. So, and I read this. Why? Yeah. <laughs> They've becoming, they're becoming more and more and more popular, these uh, non-alcoholic beverages. Why? I don't know. Isn't that the point of it, to get fucking drunk? I mean, my wife did buy some when she was pregnant. Okay, so there you go. But she really didn't drink but it. But there's a good right. reason to buy it, Donna. Yeah. But other than that, uh, uh, yeah, why? I, mean, I, I will say the Sam Adams ones is pretty good, but why? Yeah, I wouldn't drink it regularly. I don't think, um, yeah, they're, it, they're just booming. Uh, according to research... They had they grew they grew more than twenty percent last year, and yeah. oh, the show's kicking you off the air. Yeah, nothing kicks me <laughs> off the air. I just move that around, <laughs> and more than a hundred and twenty percent. Jim's over here revealing all the background shit happening. Who <laughs> <laughs> gave this guy headphones? <laughs> Ignore the man behind. <laughs> <laughs> and more, uh, more than 120% over the last three years. So that's crazy. You know, like, why would you, why would you want to drink a non-alcoholic drink? You know, I've noticed virgin cocktails have become a big thing, too. Virgin mixology. Um, so have virgins. Yeah, that would be great. Right. So, uh, you just load up with alcohol. Exactly. <laughs> that, that everybody else Boom. isn't drinking. <laughs> I th- I think the thing is, uh, these people still want to. Drinking's still a big part of culture, 
And I think there's a lot of people getting out of drinking as a culture. I think it's more of a socializing culture, and they just kind of want to not drink. Yeah, it's the hipsters. It is the hipsters. Yeah. yeah. Do you have you ever now? Now this brings up an interesting fact because if you give someone a, a non-alcoholic, it, like maybe in in our day, that's all, the only thing in our day. The only thing I could think of. <laughs> we is, are old. <laughs> where, where are you going with this? The only thing I could think of is old duels, right? That was non-alcoholic oh, beer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, do you think if you gave, oh, let's say a a twenty year old or something non-alcoholic beer? Will they start acting drunk? Like, will your mind... That depends. Are you telling them it's a non-alcoholic beer? No. We're it's, saying this is So pl- placebo effect, yes. Right. I think they would you start think acting that, drunk. Yeah? Have you guys ever acted, like, fake drunk? Ever? No. I have. I mean, I've gotten drunk. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's... that's... <laughs> I have. When I wanted to leave a, a party... At a college, and I pretended I was really drunk and had to go. And then, uh, why, why wouldn't you just leave? She broke up with me that night, and um, then you got real drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think I've ever done that. I was about to but say, why is this getting so depressing so fast? <laughs> you know who you're talking to. <laughs> go write a song about it. I will. So it got me thinking, actually, how. Do you make non-alcoholic beer or spirits? And I never knew this. Oh yeah, because you're a beer guy. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. And I only know how to make shit with alcohol. Because <laughs> I don't fucking know how to do that. Well, non-alcoholic beer, we do what we normally do. Yeah. But you don't throw the yeast in it, and you just drink the wort. <laughs> no, that's not how to do it. <laughs> that's not how to do. It. And I thought that was it would be something like that. That would be gross as hell. Well, yeah. We've tasted that at uh, that one brewery. Right? I don't want to say their name, but because I don't remember their name. If I could say their name, I would say it because they had shitty fucking beer. I Fuck. It had something to do with the shit, brother. Shit, brother? Is that it? I don't give a fuck. Fuck them. <laughs> fuck them and their shitty beers. Um. So then I was thinking, like, how is this made? Okay. So in a beer process, this might get boring. In a beer process, you got to brew the uh, you know sugars and um, you know throw yeast in it at the end, and the, the the yeast eats the sugars and poops out fucking alcohol. So how does that happen? Well, I guess it's a more of a um, a pressure type of thing. So the most common way to do a non-alcoholic shit, beer, liquor, whatever is by adding water or steam uh, to the liquid and boiling it under pressure. The, this releases the alcohol's vapor into a condenser where it's collected and sent away. It's collected and bottled for other sales. Right. <laughs> the remaining liquid. So it's basically, you know how like you can make, because I was actually thinking of making my own um, um, liquor and then making a whiskey and putting it in the barrel and all that. So making moonshine. Right. <laughs> Legally, though. With a pressure cooker. <laughs> it's it's not legal. You need a license to make it, motherfucker. I didn't say I was cooking shit with a pressure cooker. No, wait, wasn't there just a couple fires down the street with this practice run? That wasn't me. Hey. They think it's Matt. I told them it was Matt. But anyway, so you got to think, like, because you got you to gotta take out a lot of that liquid, um, before you actually drink it because it could be jet fuel and it could fucking literally kill you. So I maybe that's that's kind of where they're kind of going with that. You you do enough and then you steam it and then the steam goes into a little shit. Yeah, so they're just distilling it. Distilling yeah, they're, beer. They're just distilling beer. They're distilling the spirits. So they're actually making real beer then they distill it afterwards get the alcohol out. Correct. They, yeah, okay. yeah, and an easier way to. That's a good. That's a good point there, Matt. I like that. Penis. Yeah. So um yeah so uh, anyone else got anything to say? Do you know that he got his nuts cut? I'm aware that that was happening, but yeah. I'm not asking. Look at the stitches. <laughs> 
No. Mike's got his camera on again. Do you, <laughs> well, they can't see anything, so it's okay. I mean, you're leaning back. Just, just, I mean, just a little flap. Just. <laughs> so how are the boys feeling down there? Uh, today's pretty good. A little itchy. Not no pain anymore. You got it done last week. Yeah, last Thursday. So it's All been right. a week. You think you would have been up to coming to the show last Friday if we had it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's the one who would text to me, and you. Uh, I would have had a bag of frozen peas with me, but. <laughs> and he would have been coming. <laughs> he would have been. Coming. <laughs> the fuck you looking at me for? Uh when are you getting it done? What? Coming? When are you getting the snip? Um, uh, I don't know. They uh, have another kid they got to have. No, that's not true. <laughs> um, I have, it, Michelle wants a baby. She's got the, the vaginal thing, so There's something in her vagina. I feel it with the tip of my penis. At least I say I do. So, <laughs> so your, I your penis ain't that long. <laughs> You know, sometimes she'll say, "Did and, you?" And you actually have to have sex, right? <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, she listens to this too. Now she's gonna hear this, and then we're gonna have more sex. It's gonna be great. No, but she'll ask me, you know, like, "Did you feel it?" You know, just to make sure it's in there. And I'll say, "Yeah, I fucking felt it." I no, <laughs> no, I did feel it. I love you. You have to turn the question around. And ask her if she felt it. <laughs> ah, I pushed it in. Sometimes I'm my, sometimes my penis be pushing it so hard. I bet that she felt your dick. <laughs> oh, my dick, yeah. That's up for debate. <laughs> all right. Well, that's the end of the show. Thank you guys for listening. We are on all streaming platforms and uh thank you Tim for coming. Thanks for having me. Us. Yeah, anytime you want to come. You know, you're like our uh, fourth I, Beatle. I will make this a habit. Yeah. I don't think he's allowed to come right now. <laughs> well, uh, he I is. Can. You can come. You just can't do the... Uh... It just goes in the bladder, right? No, it's, it's the same. It's just... They, well, we want to talk about this on air. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, there's. Uh, it's actually uh, quite uh, debatable on how long you still produce. Anywhere from, I heard, anywhere from two to four months, you still can uh, produce Damn. live spermies. So, so those guys are are literally swimming still. Yep. Wow. Mm. Not really sure how the anatomy works, but yeah, fuck it. <laughs>